So before going into the details of a high-speed load balancer, I will remind everybody what is a load balancer and what are its requirements. So a load balancer is a device that dispatches packets from a client to multiple servers. It is usually found in data centers where you want multiple servers to implement a single service. And there are basically four requirements you li you'd like a load balancer to have. The first one is the ability for the load balancer to send packets of the same connection to the same server. That is called per connection consistency, or PCC. If you don't have that PCC, it means that packet could go to the wrong server that may eventually lead to a reset or to a timeout. And of course, that's a very bad experience for the user. You'd like also the load balancer to ensure that servers get more or less the same load, to try to approach a uniform load balancing. And because the load balancer may receive millions of requests uh, to dispatch to thousands of servers, you'd like it to be very efficient. And finally, you'd like the load balancer to be able to drain connections from one server and add some of those servers according to the current load of the service or for planned maintenance. And the challenge we face is really this per connection consistency. Because for each packet of a connection, an existing connection, the load balancer must ask itself, wait, which which connection is, uh, which server is handling this connection again? And the problem is that today's solution cannot answer all of those requirements at the same time. For instance, it's very easy to build an efficient load balancer using hashing mechanism like ECMP, and it won't break any connection until you try to add and remove some servers because that will eventually break connections. And if you want some uniformity, you'll have to use a stateful load balancer that will remember for every connection passing by in the huge table uh, which server was selected for that connection. Uh, and that would allow some uniformity, some dynamicity, but it's much less efficient because of that table that is, which is subject to resource exhaustion. So what we did in our system, which is called Cheetah, to try to waive all of those requirements, we try to answer this question of which server is handling this connection again that the, the load balancer must ask itself in a different way. In Cheetah, we ask the user to remember for us. And that's really the key idea behind Cheetah. We store the information about the load balancing decision into a cookie that is uh, in embedded inside the packet header of a connection. And we arrange for the cookie to come back with every packet of the client. And that allows to implement any realizable load balancing mechanism like round robin or selecting for every new connection the least loaded server or the newly added server or stop selecting some server that we want to drain. And this also leads to very high resilience because contrary to stateful load balancer where when the load balancer fails, you lose all the states so you don't know where you send the connection, uh, in our case, the state will come back with the packet. So it's very resilient. And this scheme, which is actually quite simple, allows for very fast implementation. And we built multiple of them. We built a full-featured software implementation that can do 100 gigabit networking with four cores and support multiple load balancing mechanisms and multiple uh, metrics. It's fully available. We also built a prototype on P4 Tofino, uh, which can potentially, with the latest of the chips from uh, Barefoot, reach dozens of terabits per second. But for NDA reasons, we cannot release that implementation. So we built a new one from scratch, which is using P416 and is fully available. So all in all, um, Shita allows to have all those requirements, particularly guaranteeing per-connection consistency while processing, processing packets five times faster than uh, in software uh, with a stateful load balancer. And it also reduced the tail latency by a factor of two, of two compared to hashing thanks to this more uniform spreading you can do. OK, so how does Shita work? Uh, so clients generate uh, packets to establish a connection, typically a TCP SYN, and there we run our load balancing logic. So run robin, wefted run robin, or let's say in this case, we'll select the currently list to the server, which will be server two. So we send the packet to server two, nothing fancy here. It's when we receive the packet back that we find the server ID two, and we encode it into the cookie. And then we send the packet to the client, and when the client generates a new packet, we'll get the cookie, and we just have to extract the server ID from the cookie. So you're probably asking yourself, where do we store the cookie? How do we uh, force this uh, semantic? 
Well, we could have designed, for instance, a new TCP option uh, to allow this same thing. And while this would be fine for backend servers, where you can modify the clients, for front-end servers, you cannot possibly modify all the stacks of all the users and smartphones, etc. So we looked for backward compatible options, and we embed the cookie in the most significant bits of the TCP timestamp. And we do this without breaking uh, RTT computation or protection against wrapped sequence number. All details of that are in the paper. We could also have done it into the quick connection ID, where we could encode the cookie, or in the least significant bits of the IPv6 address, and use IPv6 mobility to uh, change the IP address. OK, so we extract the server ID from uh, the, the cookie, and we send the packet to the right server, and we don't break the connection. As it, the scheme works, but there is a slight problem, which is that we allow an attacker to target a single server. So an attacker can coordinate and bring down one server. So that's not very appealable. So what we do in practice is to not put the server ID into the cookie, but the XOR of the server ID and the hash of the portable of the connection. So we send this obfuscated pack cookie to the client, and the client get back, gives us back the obfuscated cookie, and we just have to XOR it again to cancel the hash and get the original server ID. The effect of this is that if multiple clients forge the same cookie, they will uh, either lead, when we XOR the, the, the cookie, to a wrong server index, and therefore will be able to drop the packet directly, or at least will spread the, connection, the attack among all the servers. So as it, uh, this scheme works without modifying the clients and without modifying the servers, but we may want to modify the servers to uh, ensure uh, that cookie fixing directly do that cookie first fixing on the server, which allows the packets not to go through the load balancer. So that's a feature called direct server return, and we do provide a modifi modificated version of the uh, uh, Linux kernel that allows to do, to do this cookie fixing directly onto the server. OK, so what I just presented is the stateless Sheeta load balancer. Um, it allows to meet all of those requirements. And like a stateful load balancer, a traditional stateful load balancer, it does allow to uh, select a different server for every new connection, but it's stateless. But we built another Sheeta. There are two Sheeta, also a stateful Sheeta which have all the same features, but one more. The, uh, it allows also to keep some per-connection state directly onto the load balancer. And what do you want, would you want to do that? Well, for instance, if you want to build a nothing in load balancer, you'll need to remember the original source IP and original uh, port, right? And if you want to keep track of statistics, like uh, the number of packets that did go through for every connection to the load balancer, implement a red limiter or your preferred stateful network function, then you'll need that state directly on the load balancer. And uh, the stateful load, uh, Sheeta load balancer works as follows. Instead of encoding into the cookie the server ID, we encode the flow index. And that flow index is directly an index into a state table that contains, contains the state you want uh, for every connection. So of course, the server ID, because it's a load balancer, but also the NAT state if, uh, if you want to the, this NATing load balancer, or the uh, statistics. So that allows constant time lookup. So it's nice, but it's even more interesting because you can keep a stack of empty indexes into the, uh, the table. So basically, indexes to empty line. And to allocate a new entry, so when you receive one of those new uh, connections, uh, you can just pop one stack from the, from the stack of index, pop one index from the stack of index. And that allows constant time insertion, too. And you can also do insert, constant time deletion by pushing back the index uh, into the stack. And while this constant time business is interesting because it's make it uh, fast in software, it's much more interesting for hardware data planes because it makes the entire scheme doable from the hardware data plane. For instance, in P4, uh, you cannot insert entries from the, the, uh, the hardware data plane. You have to send the packet to the controller that will parse the packet and will insert into the table from the control plane. And of course, that's a huge source of bottleneck. Here we can do everything at line rate. 
Okay, so speaking of performance, it's time to do some evaluation. And the first evaluation we'll do is in terms of packet processing uh, performance. And we built a test bed where we generate a request to, for an 8K HTTP file to the load balancer that will dispatch those requests to 64 servers. And we generate around 10,000 requests uh, per, uh, per second. So that's roughly um, uh, half a million requests in total. Um, and we measure the uh, number of cycles per packets uh, taken by the load balancing mechanism. And the first technique we measure is a stateful load balancer implemented using a Cuckoo hash table that we took from DPDK. And if we compare this to our stateless Sheeta load balancer, we can run five times faster, which is more or less the same performance than a hash-based load balancer. So really the fastest implementation of hash-based uh, load balancer we could come up with, which used the last bit of the hash computed by hardware, not even the software, to select uh, one server into a table. Which basically means that we have all the advantages of stateful classification at the price of stateless classification. That is per connection consistency, even while adding and removing servers, and we do have an experiment into the paper that shows this, and also the ability to select a uh, different server for every connection. I'll come back to that uh, in a bit. And also, uh, our stateful Sheeta load balancer, so only allows to have some more state per connection, uh, and does it like three times faster than uh, this Cuckoo hash table, thanks to this constant time classification uh, of stateful classification. Okay. So uh, why do we want this uniformity? Why don't we like hashing, simply? Um, to, to answer that question, we built another experiment, uh, which is similar, does request to a file, but to generate this file, we induce some amount of constant CPU load. And we tune the number of requests per server, so uh, that induces, as you can see on the uh, x-axis of this graph, more and more load on the servers. And what we measure is the static statistical variance across the server loads. And what we can see is that when we use hashing, we've got this 20 to 30% variance uh, across the server loads for medium to high load. Um, and that basically means that some servers receive much more requests than some other servers. And to prevent those servers that are slightly more loaded to be overloaded, you've got to lower the average utilization of all servers. That is called over-provision. And this is in line with uh, what the Maglev Google, balancer, Google Load Balancer showed, which uh, showed that in their Google data center, they have up to 30% over-provision. So that's basically 30% of resource you waste just to avoid overloading loading a few of the servers. So what we can do is to try to lower this, uh, this um, invariance, this variance across the load balancing. And simply, as we have a uniform workload, we can use RunRobin with Sheeta, even at scale, without breaking connection. And that allows to lower the variance to a near zero and achieve a near uniform load balancing. And if we measure the tail latency, so the 99 flow completion time for the same experiment, uh, which is a very important metric in data center because you want to be sure that all your users have always a good service, um, we can see that we lower the tail latency by 2 to 3x because no servers get way too much, uh, much requests, and so requests uh, have a more uniform uh, distribution of service time. Okay, um, you, you may think that uh, uniform workload is a specific case, and that is true. So uh, we also try the bimodal workload where some requests are heavy and some requests are uh, very small and very fast to process. And that's unpredictable for the load balancer. So indeed, if we measure the tail latency again, um, we can see that run robin is not helping much, right? Because uniformly distributed uh, unpredictable request still leads to an unpredictable load. So what we need to do is to lo look at the load of the servers and try to send less requests to the uh, servers that are more overloaded. And the first method we tried is for every new connection, try uh, to, to send the, the, uh, the request to the least loaded server. And that does not work very well, actually, because of the information delay. So you'll send way too much requests to the server, which will be completely overloaded, before you get that information that the server is overloaded. So what we try instead is a power of two choices uh, and a weighted run robin, where we automatically 
um, change the wave of the server according to the current load of the servers. And that allows to slightly shift the most of the load to the uh, least loaded servers and allows to lower the tail latency by a factor of 2x. But what I'd like um, to pinpoint here is that Cheetah is not a paper about uh, is least loaded better than Power of 2. It's more to provide the tech, uh, a system that allows you to implement your preferred uh, advanced server selection techniques without breaking this connection uh, connect consistency, even at scale. And you could imagine more advanced techniques, like uh, according to the current bandwidth to the servers or uh, what is the metrics you can think of. Uh, so it's really a system to allow your preferred uh, system. OK, so uh, I encourage you to look into the paper where we've got more large scale simulations um, and uh, more experiments uh, where we compare to the state of the art, like uh, Beamer, which is a system, a stateless load balancer, that uh, removes some of the uh, connection consistency uh, breakage, but do not prevent uh, the uh, load balancer to, to, um, to, to uh, guarantee, does not allow the load balancer, sorry, to guarantee connection consistency, and does not deal with uniformity. Uh, we have also details about the cookie encoding. And we have consideration about scaling stateful load balancer, because in traditional stateful load balancer, when you've got many servers, you need multiple stateful load balancer, which means that you need a stateless load balancer to dispatch packets to those stateful load balancer. And the problem is that when you add stateful load balancer, you may send the packet to the wrong stateful load balancer, which does not have the state for your packet. So you still break connection at scale, even with, even with a stateful load balancer. So this is why, actually, um, uh, load balancer like uh, Google Maglev and Microsoft Ananta still use uh, hashing even if they're stateful to, to avoid breaking too much connection. OK, so in Cheetah, uh, we exploited a network cookie to guarantee per connection consistency and support an irrealizable uh, load balancing mechanism. And we also presented a fast design which allow constant time flow insertion and lookup from the data plane. And while this is interesting for a, a load balancer, it's a good contribution by itself because it allows really stateful classification entirely from hardware data plane. And given the advantages that we've seen from um, f uh, the advantage that we've seen thanks to this cookie, uh, we pose the question of whether this should be made as a standard. Uh, and I'd like just to remind that we have uh, our implementation available on GitHub, and it includes data set and experiments and even the plots to redo our graph. And with this, I really thank you for listening and be happy to take any question you may have. Questions? So I have one. So how did you, um, I, you probably mentioned this, but I probably missed it. How do you handle failures in this load balancer design? Um, in, a, well, in the stateful design, actually. Yeah, um, well, in the stateful design, if, if the state is lost, uh, you won't recover the state. So in the multi-tier load balancer, I quickly mentioned in the end, we, uh, we, we keep into the, um, some part of the, uh, of the cookie the index of the stateful load balancer so we can still uh, send the packet to the right stateful load balancer. Um, yeah. OK, thanks. But if the state is lost, you, can, you cannot recover it. Of course, there, there's no magic. You would need to synchronize the state of the stateful load balancer. Uh, but in the stateless one, uh, if the load balancer fails, uh, you still have the, the cookie, which will give you the right server. So it's more resilient. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.